Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working in the master bathroom. So come on with me and we'll show you what we got. We'll start over here, Jordan. Um, the plumbers have already done their work. We've had it inspected and actually yesterday, Jordan and I backfilled and poured the concrete. So the toilet used to be here. They swung it over here. Um, one thing I wanna point out, they used four inch risers. So what that's gonna make it that's going to make it easy on us when we set the flange. We can tile right up to the pipe with the tile and, and we'll grout it and finish the floor. We'll cut this off flush and the flange will sit inside the pipe, the four inch pipe, on top of the, the finished floor, which is what you want. So this is the toilet side and today's work is over here. Remember the bathtub was over here. We're going to put a curbless shower in right here. So the four inch sewer main runs right, right here, about two feet deep. The plumbers tied into it. They ran a vent. It's tied in to a main stack in the roof. And then this fitting, this is actually a street 45. That's where we're gonna attach our Schluter flange. So this will all be filled in underneath for support and we're going to chip all this concrete out and then from this black line to this flange that pan that sub uh, pre-slope mortar base will will slope to the to the uh, to the drain we we left this rough I kind of hit it with my notch trowel just so that the mortar bed would would key into that so our next step is to start cutting we've got our diamond blade on our saw We've got our hose ready and our shop back set up on wet back. Right, so Jordan and I are gonna get geared up with eye protection, hearing protection, dust masks, and we're gonna get going and get this thing chipped out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Like no dust. Yes, I thought I'd do the perimeter first just to give me an edge to work to. We're going to change blades. Got this one right here, Jordan. Nice. Now, notice the arrow. That's the direction of cut. So I have a saw where the blade is on the left-hand side. It helps me as a right-hander, like this, seeing the blade in my mark. Otherwise, I'd have to be over here. But I'm right-handed, so I have the blade on the left. Because of that, you gotta make sure this is right. They don't have an arrow on the other side. So that would be wrong. So it has to go this way. Just a quick little tip about saws that have blades on the left. And the other thing, of course, that means these are left-hand thread. 
So it's so see righty how? loosey, lefty tighty. Correct. <laughs> but it's tightening this left hand thread. And that's all I do. I don't go crazy. And I'm sure we're going to hear in the comments why are we using an electric saw with water. This is double insulated. We're plugged into a ground fault. Um, this side of the saw is hardly getting any water, so I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. All right, guys. Oh. So we've got all our cuts made. That took us about 45 minutes, I would say. Yep. Um, using the hose and the diamond blade on the circular saw. So something that was interesting that we noticed cutting this much concrete in this short amount of time was that it got easier in some spots and harder in other spots. So we think that's just because of the, the mixture, right? How some, it's sometimes more sandy in areas and sometimes it's a lot more yeah. rocky. Yeah, the, the slurry would actually change colors from yeah. gray to a sand color as you're cutting through rocks or cutting through uh, concrete. And yeah, so and you can feel it in the saw when it's- Yeah, sometimes it gets harder through, and you yeah. really gotta push yeah. and other times it's just a breeze. So. Yeah. Now that we've got all of our cuts made, um, we went an inch, an inch depth on the circular saw on the first seven cuts, so seven lines. I'll put a diagram up over the voice um, so you guys can get a more visual representation. So we went an inch deep, and then after seven, we went an inch and a half. So now we're going to go get the grinder. Clean up those corners. Yeah, we're going to get the grinder, and we're going to clean up these corners so we get a nice chip out. And then after we do that with the grinder, we're going to go get the chipping hammer. All right, nice job. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna blast this out with some water clean out this the trap uh, years ago some masons had to uh, some masons were finishing a new slab all the slurry went into the floor drain and turned into concrete in the trap so we're gonna wash this out make sure we're clear we don't want to have to fix this trap <laughs> we thought we'd show you guys the blade after we were done uh, has a little bit of life in it. In it, we pushed this saw kind of hard, but uh, this blade did a great job. Yeah. So for what, thirty-five bucks? Yep. I mean, it made a bunch of cuts. Yep. So, well worth the investment. Oh yeah. Hey gang, I rented this chipping hammer while Jordan went to get lunch. I kind of started already while I was waiting on him, but now we're refueled and we're gonna chip all this out of here and clean it up and get get it ready for the pre-slope. Okay, we got our Schluter drain flange just dry fit and it's, it's level. We checked it both ways. And now all we're gonna do is go from the perimeter of that to the edge of our concrete. And we're checking that we have enough depth here for our mortar bed. Um, had a few places where it chipped out, but that's fine. We can work around that. And I'm just gonna use some blue paint here, Jordan. And I'm just going to spray where we need to chip it out. Here. Remember Jordan saying that uh, we cut deeper right, right here, and you can see why we had to. We started shallow, and then we went with a deeper cut on our diamond blade saw because we had to account for this slope. We're good all right here. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but we have a pretty good slope here. 
And the reason is that we're using a pebble stone on the shower floor. Uh, and in fact, Schluter recommends a half inch per foot slope. So that's what we've got here. A lot of there you go. I was just gonna say a lot of thunder and lightning outside. So I rigged up a light. This is what we'd be working in without it. <laughs> so I had to rig up a light. All right, we chipped a little more, cleaned and vacuumed, and now we're checking again with our level. I'm just gonna start here. Just don't want any interference. That side is good. That side is good. No problem. Yeah. All right, hand me that longer board. A little blow out here. We'll work around it. Take a little bit more off of here. Okay. Hey, good morning. We're back at the project house. Today we're gonna turn this rough, irregular shower area into a nice, smooth, sloped base for our new shower. I set the flange last night. It's uh, perfectly level in all directions. And I, I mixed up some some mortar very thin and I put it in a grout bag and then I injected it into the hollow space around here so it's nice and solid and then I came around here with it any extra I had I just put it around here now we're going to go outside mix up some thin set we're just going to brush it on it'll be like a bond coat for the uh, our mortar our mortar pan we're gonna mix up the thin set, let it slake. While it's slaking, we're going to mix up the dry mix and we're gonna get all ready and we'll have this thing looking beautiful in just a couple hours. So we're only gonna mix half a bag of thin set. So we poured the whole bag into, uh, we split the bag into two buckets so we could kind of get an accurate visual on what half a bag looked like. I don't have a scale here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Three quarts of water and half a bag. So Jordan's gonna start mixing. So you can actually pour that uh, mortar, the thin set, into there. And now we're mixing it up. Yep. For five minutes, I'm gonna set a timer. Set a timer for five minutes on my phone. Setting the timer. So nice and slow, Jordan, for five minutes. We had a nice shower yesterday. This is the area that we had all dug up for our new sewer line. It settled, hardly settled at all, which means we, we backfilled and tamped it pretty good. We'll let this dry out and we'll go get some sod and patch this and you'll never know we were here. How's that looking? It, it looks good. I'm going to show everybody in here. This is where we added the half bath. It seems so simple now just looking at it. The pipe sticking out of the ground, but what a lot of work. These are wet vent going up through the roof. New lab will be there. Of course, new toilet. Our offset is almost 15 inches, so we're gonna pad this wall out so we're at a 12 inch uh, rough end, not offset, rough end. How are you doing? You said I have to mix this for five minutes? Yep. Is there a lock on here? Is there there is, but only at high speed, so you don't wanna do that. So we've got the timer set for five minutes. So we'll see you guys when it's all mixed up. All right, that's our timer and we'll set another one for 10 minutes. 
And while that's flaking, we're going to mix up our uh, okay. dry mix. Ten minutes and counting. Sand mix, uh, mortar bed, all kind of name. We just got finished mixing our sand mix. Timer went off on the slaking, so now we're gonna remix the, uh, the thin set. Okay, we're gonna give the concrete in here just a quick mist so it doesn't draw all the moisture out of our thin set. Get it all vacuum? Yep. All right. So I'm gonna go get our screed boards ready. If you wanna, you can just pour some of that in there mm -hmm. and use that brush and just dab and okay and coat all that. You want me to coat the all just the gray, all the rocks? Uh, so you can pour some right there. Mm -hmm. You want me to cover what's already mortared right there? Yeah. The whole thing? Yep. Okay. And then I'm just gonna spread it out. Make sure you get in all the little sure. nooks and crannies. We're ready for our dry pack. It's in the wheelbarrow here behind Jordan. You already put thin set down right here. I used to have a set of aluminum screeds, but I don't anymore. So I just use my track saw. These are perfectly straight. This is the track saw edge. I painted the other side blue just so I wouldn't get confused. And we're gonna use these for our screeds. I measured. So the short one will be from here to here. The middle one will get me almost to the corner. And of course the long one gets me from the flange to the far corners. Well, here we go. My problem is I never know when to stop. You know, it's like, I can make it better. I can make it perfect. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just gotta say, that's fine. Oh yeah, I'm good man. It looks awesome. Really happy with that. 
There was a lot of work represented right there. Putting a shower where there was nothing before, just the old vanity was along this wall. The doorway was right here. It is gonna be beautiful. The reason we left, uh, one thing we didn't talk about, the reason we left this much over here is because we're gonna have a wall there like that and a niche, the whole width of the back wall of the shower. So this, this wall will form the lower half of the niche and then we'll build another wall for the upper half. Yeah, that was intentional that we left that yeah, space. Yeah, so now you see how we have an equal border all the way around after we build that wall. Yeah, let's show them in the wheelbarrow what's left. We used two 60 pound bags of sand mix and that's all we have left, so. Looks like I'll be returning three bags. Yeah. It went a lot further than I thought. Oh, yeah. I'm excited, man. It's going to be great. We can finally start putting that back bathroom back together. Mm -hmm. We're going to frame up this wall today. Electricians are going to be here on Monday. Today's Saturday. So we're going to get ready for the electricians now. Hey, gang. We're going to finish framing this wall. But before we do that, we want to put some backing right here. We're going to have drywall right here. There's nothing to secure it to in this corner. We have a bunch of plywood left over. So we just cut it into strips and we're just gonna use that um, rather than dimensional lumber or two by four or something. This idea works great on the outside wall because then you can get insulation back here also, full depth almost. So we're just gonna attach it with some screws from this side. Now we can put in our jack. Where is it at? The short ones. And we'll put in our jack stud on top of that. And then we're all ready for drywall. See how nice that slides between that insulation and the framing? And we're not compacting that a lot. We've got all our framing done in the master bath, We're ready for uh, the electricians. Got all our blocking in. We're all ready. Now we're gonna move over here. This is the master closet. There was a wet bar here. There was a wall here. The wet bar opened into the living room. Took the wet bar out, so we're gonna frame up a wall right here. And we're gonna leave one stud out so we can continue walking through here so we don't have to go all the way around every time we go work in the master bath. Let's get a piece of pressure treated 50 and three quarter. We'll fasten it to the slab. I'll measure the studs and we'll get this one up. Tool for 
vacuum. It's in here. what we use a split nail they're fantastic fast and strong we do need a little sledge though Right, that wall's ready. We're gonna work in the half bath now and build that new wall where the pocket door goes and keep, go keep on going. All right guys, so five o'clock snuck up on us really fast. Um, Dad and I actually decided to not do the half bath today. I know we said that we were gonna do it today, but we ended up deciding against it because time just got away from us. Don't worry, we're gonna be doing that tomorrow early in the morning. Um, one of the reasons that we were unable to do it was because the uh, rental place that we got the pressure washer from gave us the wrong hose. So we had to spend a little time going back and forth with them, getting the right hose, lost a little bit of time, but what can you do? We made a lot of progress today, so we're happy with that. Actually, when we pulled up with the pressure washer, I said, Dad, let's try it out on the fence. Let's just see how this thing operates so we're familiar with it, not fooling with it over the weekend. And that's when we found out that the hose was the wrong one. So if we hadn't have checked out the pressure washer, we would have been stuck with the wrong hose for the whole weekend. Our project is scuffed. We can't do anything. So it's a really good thing that we checked it out. Um, that worked out in our favor. But like I said, guys, we're going to be working on the half bath tomorrow and pressure washing and cleaning the entire backyard outside of the house and getting it ready for paint this weekend and at the start of next week. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with somebody you know. That way they might enjoy the channel and you guys can follow along with us as we continue to work on our main project house over the course of these next couple weeks. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Good job, bud. Good job.